and the game is beginning. Game two in the series between Spaden and Eddie for the Empire Collective Cup. Here we go. Alrighty, we're in. And I'm hoping that there won't be a restart here because Spaden was asking me how many restarts he has. And I, I believe he paused the game as well, which indicates that he might be tempted to call a re. And to be honest with you, have you seen Spaden's map? I think I would call a re if I was him. <laughs> Oh my god, that map is bad. I've seen some bad maps in my time, but good lord, where is his tree line? There is just no trees here. It's like, Arabia is just like, hey bro, have you heard? This is the desert, there's no trees here. And uh, yeah, I mean, Spartan is so shafted by this. It's unbe unbelievable. Not to mention the fact he has a forward gold, a forward, like everything is out on the front of his TC. And he has absolutely nothing to wall against. No trees in sight, really. And I think, I think, but this is a, a like a 99.9% .9 restart from Spartan here. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, certainly I would call a restart in his shoes is Eddie's map doesn't look too shabby and Spartan's looks extremely bad. Winning this game would be very, very impressive. Yeah, I, I think I think he will call a re. Uh, obviously, that longest 50 seconds of our life, well, we're having to relive it because that's why the game is paused right now. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a little longer. I, I'm pretty sure he's going to restart, but until the game resumes and he actually calls it, we just don't know. So we're going to wait this one out just for a minute here for the, the pause or the game to unpause again. But uh, yeah, pretty horrendous map. Worth noting though, look at the civs. Eddie here choosing Aztecs and Spartan taking Huns. So we're actually going to see a non-mirror civ war as well in game two. Oh, this is really cool. And something that has been very surprising, at least to me, is the Huns haven't been a particularly popular choice actually in game two and three where there are no civ bans. Yeah, they have been not showing up that often. They've been really... It's it's strange. Like you'd think the hunts may be a little more popular, but I think it just goes to show the strength of the Aztecs because they really are, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, the most popular choice for game number two. Now I'm just gonna tab out real quick and and make sure that uh, like I don't really know what's happening right now. It's just very strange. I wonder if they re-hosted the game. No. Um. Okay. It says there's seven minutes in game right now. Is the game resumed? Uh, Spears were still no. stuck. Oh, oh, wait, oh, it's there moving. we go. We're back. All right, so it doesn't seem like Spartans called a re at this point, um, which is amazing to me. And we'll have to just sit tight in case he still calls it. Um, until he does, we just won't know. Um, but thank you very much to Trowolo for reset. <laughs> what? <laughs> Trowolo. I mean, okay, it's obviously Tro. Wallalo, but still, <laughs> I like to butcher names. It's just what I do now. It's my thing. But uh, thank you for subbing, man. Much appreciated, uh, as always. But okay, so we are seemingly gonna see this game. Like I don't think Spartan is calling a re here, which kind of boggles my mind. As if you don't remake on this map, what map is bad enough to warrant a remake? I'm not quite sure, but. He technically has till five minutes into the game, right? And we're only two minutes in, yeah. so is he going to call it? No, I don't think he will because I've tabbed out into the game room um, to see if they've come back and they're still in game. Oh. And according to the game timer, it says they're in game eight minutes and 34 seconds. So it seems like the re is not going to happen and Spartan possibly going to screw himself here, which it's not the wisest thing to do, because like you say, if you're not going to call a re here, when do you call a re? <laughs> when your map is effectively hell, maybe then, but like in Spartan shoes right now, this is the perfect time to use it, really. Well, uh, at least though, uh, he... Okay, this game isn't completely lost for him. He might be able to go make something happen here. I mean, the Huns are quite a strong Civ, the Aztecs as well. But what worries me a lot here is knowing the Civilization matchup, you know, we know that the, the Aztecs love their super strong early game Drush with Militia, and without the ability to really wall up anything, that could do a lot of damage to Spaden's economy. 
Yeah, it could, it could. Um, I, I, I kind of feel like Spawn might just do some small walls around his lumber line and around his uh, forage bush rather than attempting to do like bigger walls. But we'll have to see how it goes, really. I think Spawn has to play this game aggressively. There's no question about that. Um, he, he's not really got much choice, but this is the thing. With the Aztecs being able to do that five militia rush, it's the strongest rush out there and they're kind of you know the ball is in their park they call the shots it's like they're gonna drush you you have to react to that one way or another and at that point they've kind of got you on the defensive because as the huns if you want to make five militia then you have to sacrifice loom or you have to go and mine gold really early which sets your economy uh, in a really awkward position well, that it certainly does. Looks like Eddie is going to try and be doing a little bit of that makeshift wall-off action on the left-hand side of his base. He wants to sort of protect his main gold, of course, as that's going to be a critical resource for him. And thankfully, due to the way his map is set up, while this isn't the easiest uh, thing to wall, he should be able to at least protect his main gold. Yeah, I mean, we've kind of been focusing a lot on Spahn's side of the map, but... Um... <laughs> I don't know what I said earlier on. Uh, Zedon said something about someone... I should have said the ball is in their court. Whatever, man. <laughs> but, um, yeah, basically, I mean, we've kind of looked at Spawn's map a lot, but we've not really looked too much at Eddie's map. And I, I don't think his map is that much better, to be honest with you. You know, it's very, very open on the left, and it's pretty damn open on the right as well. But he has got a back gold, he has got a back stone, he has got back wood. So... They're three things that Spartan doesn't have, uh, just to name, uh, you know, just to name three. Um, so Spartan's in an awkward position. Ooh, but Sp oh, Spartan has a one HP villager on that boar in the town center right now, and Eddie with the jukes. Gonna dodge all the town center shots, and he almost got a free pick, but not quite. However, Spartan, like you mentioned earlier, he has to play on the aggressive since he can't build walls of his own, and he's going about as aggressive as it gets. That is a three militia rush. Yeah, pretty much, and uh, I don't know if he's tempted to, to make more. I mean, he's moving two villages out to gold right now, and uh, that's a four militia drush. It's a five militia drush. Oh my god, he's doing all the drush. And so yeah, I mean, literally, like I said just a few moments ago, he's either going to have to neglect doing loom, which he has now not done, in order to make five militia, or he has to take gold and make more militia anyway. So he's opting to neglect loom, he'll take the gold to do loom and, and get that when he can. As a result, though, his rush will be slightly faster, and uh, that actually puts him in a, an okay position, because if he keeps Eddie on the defensive here with this rush, then he could hopefully use that to his advantage once he reaches Feudal to keep that pressure on and uh, still take a win here. And speaking of Eddie on the defensive, he is breaking the metagame, guys. There, are, There's no militia here from the Aztecs. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, so 25, uh, 25 villages up to feudal, and he's probably going to start making militia now. So his his plan here is is still to do a drush, but it will be a much slower drush. It's going to be uh, clearly a more defensive sort of drush play, and his plan is to do a fast feudal into mana arms, but I don't think he's going to be expecting five militia from Spartan here at all, and if Spartan can get a couple of quick kills on these militia, then that mana arms upgrade is, is basically going to be useless for Eddie anyway. This is extremely convenient for Spaden, actually, that Eddie decided to go for such a delayed sort of minute arms push, as Spaden is with five militia in Eddie's base. Eddie might have the home field advantage with production, but with this scout coming up, that's a sixth militia. Eddie oh, could, yeah. could be in some serious trouble. I tell you what, I absolutely love this style of play. Like, just keep adding militia. Just don't stop. It's fine. And Spartan here will get a villager kill as well, setting him off to a great start in this game. He's got his scout there as well, which is something that Eddie does not have. Eddie's three villagers on the left side going forwards. Looks like he's going to drop a forward tower on that horrendous wood line. And uh, Spartan here just clicking up to feudal, but with six militia rush here for him. Uh, that's pretty damn solid. Yeah, and uh, it looks like Eddie can't actually afford to get men-at-arms right now, so he does have to take two of his foragers to join in on the fight. Eddie had his Eagle Warrior healing up inside of his town center, and he's ready to engage this army. Spaden's feudal time is going to be so very slow because he went for all those militia. The fight continuing right now. Eddie going to clean up this army, and now he's going to try and put a forward tower, but there's a palisade wall in his way. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's getting aggressive on uh, the front with that tower, but I mean, the, the fact he cleaned that up in the back, even without the mana arms upgrade, is pretty good. The question is, how many villagers is he behind? At the moment, he's two villagers down, and uh, what's the KD looking like? Well, yeah, Eddie there, uh, still managing to kill more than he's lost, but I think he did lose one or two vills, which is fairly costly, uh, really, for him. But Spartan here will be slower to feudal. And that tower's gonna go up on his gold, so that's gonna be pretty awkward, considering, well, where's his other gold? Yeah, if he loses that gold, he is in absolutely deep trouble, as that is the only gold that he really has any access to. There's another gold mine to the right, but fat chance he's getting that one, as it looks like Eddie already planning ahead. Gonna lame this deer, build a house on that other gold mine, and spot and walking all the way over to the right. You know, I guess he could kind of wall around, uh, you know, that gold mine, right? Maybe. Well, yeah, and that's actually a good point. And if you have a look at Eddie's scouting, he actually hasn't scouted the third gold on the right side. Hmm. So Spartan here throwing up a tower, and I mean, that's actually pretty good because he's going to be able to put that tower right in between the two stones and the gold. So he can mine stone, he can mine gold there, and if he walls the back, it might not be too bad. And the fact that Eddie hasn't scouted that is obviously not ideal either, because now Eddie's going to be a few steps behind in finding that gold and uh, actually catching up to it. But oh, okay, his eagle there, getting a quick <laughs> glimpse of things before being brutally shot by that watchtower. And uh, Spartan, his reaction and archery range. You know, the fact that Spaden has all three of his resources in a sort of Illuminati triangle in the corner there makes his watchtower pretty good, as it'll be able to protect all those resources, and with the double archer range there, it's feasible that he can protect all those resources, and looks like Spaden moving forward with three fresh men-at-arms. He's gonna try Ooh. and pick off a couple of villagers here and do some damage, while Eddie uh, is just really not applying any pressure right now. Yeah, he's kind of just fallen back, hasn't he? And other than that tower, it's not really a lot going on. No military building or anything like that. Just a tower, and that's it. Spartan gonna find himself a villager kill. Gonna find another villager kill. And this is looking really solid for him. Uh, I think that's certainly worth the three mana arms there. And Eddie now, back at home. I mean, what is he actually doing? He doesn't have a stable. He... Uh, sorry, what's stable? What? He's the Aztec. He doesn't have an archery range. Um, and he's not making any more militia either. So, interesting. I think his plan was to do a fast castle after this sort of mana arms push. But it's not happened. It's not working out. And Spartan now, with two ranges coming up, and it looks like he's about to apply some pressure once again with these units that are now moving across the map. Yeah, Eddie's economy all out of whack. He's got 550 gold, and... Spawn I think, responding to this quite nicely. It's great to see the back and forth between both players as Eddie just not able to get that wall up in time, losing so many villagers. For those of you who are wondering why that house is on that forward gold, it's for two reasons. One, for vision, so he knows when Spawn wants to take that gold, but it also makes it very hard for Spawn to saturate that gold of villagers as they're going to get clumped up on that house. Oh my goodness me, I just cannot believe how many villagers Eddie is losing to these mana arms. He just lost another two villagers, putting Eddie six villagers behind at this point. He's reduced to building a double lair palisade, and oh my god, there is always a hole. Spaden walking through as though this palisade doesn't even exist, killing another villager, and Eddie just looks like... I mean, he looks like an, like just humiliated almost, walling up this right-hand side whilst this army just walks straight in, like, it doesn't even matter. Those what? words burned into his retina. Building site obstructed. Building cancelled. <laughs> this house oh. not going down. Spaden doesn't care, he's just moving forward with archers and skirms, and this is ridiculous damage to Eddie's economy. All those villagers idle in his town center, <laughs> fighting back against this army, his economy is so weak. That emergency market will allow him to get to the castle age. Is, is that even enough? Spotting somehow managed to sort of wall his map. Oh, God. <laughs> That's just too funny. It's just too funny. Like, Eddie is so used to playing on a ra arena that he just assumes the walls are, are going to be there. And I, like, just the way that Spartan walked in there. <laughs> I can't get over that. It's just too funny. And Eddie in the chat saying Age of Hole. Like, even he knows. Even he knows that was just, like, ridiculous. But Spain getting away with murder right now. And, uh, 
Eddie, yeah, like you say, finally up to the castle age, but what will he make of it? How many villages will he lose before he gets there? Still doesn't have any military. <laughs> <sighs> but it looks oh. like his plan is probably Eagle Warriors as we see the second barracks coming down. What a ridiculous game. Those villagers were like locked on target. Uh, and oh my god, there's another hole in the wall. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> Oh, that is unbelievable. That is, I mean, Eddie just, oh God, this has got to make the highlight reel, hasn't it? This is just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I have no words for this anymore. Like, come on, Spartanus is getting away with absolute murder, killing so many villagers. The idle time of Eddie is sitting at 36 minutes right now. Spartans is 20. How many more holes are there gonna be? God, with that, like, conveniently placed hill, it's so hard to see these holes in the wall, and the idle time from Eddie is ridiculous. Here comes the Eagle Warriors, Bill. Uh, I think it'll be enough to clean up this army, but Eddie is positively crippled. Honestly, I am... I've lost for words. Okay, so Eddie is bringing out some Eagle Warriors now. These are this army here has been in his base for way too long. It just, it should have been cleaned up so long ago. And, uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, Spartan's aggression here, so long-lasting, sticking, and killing so many villagers, Spartan now is up to the castle age, he's bought himself enough time, and, I mean, we were, we were spending so long talking about how terrible Spartan's map is, it's like, it doesn't even matter, I'm almost cringing for Eddie right now. He is up to the castle age with ten more villagers! Wow, so that's why Spawn didn't call for a re, because he is 100% confidence, guys, that this map is easy. No problems here. Eddie gonna move out with some Eagle Warriors. However, the Eagle Warriors don't have plus one defense, actually, so Spawn might be able to clean this up. You know, he gets some Bodkin Arrow, Crossbowman in action. I think these Eagle Warriors are just gonna die. Yeah, I, Eagles are just not a good choice here, I don't think. Not Castle Age Eagles with no upgrades. But uh, Eddie, I suppose, fortunate in the sense that Spartan here is going to be moving out across the map. He's going to miss these eagles as they hit his eco. And uh, maybe, maybe Eddie will get a few kills here. Now, of course, it's excusable for Spartan to have a few holes. His entire map is essentially a hole. Um, but Spartan doesn't seem bothered. He doesn't seem phased by these eagles. He's just going to head out with his crossbow and see what he can find. Uh, also, thank you very much to Pixel Shot for subscribing. Welcome to the Wallet Warlord Sander. Thank you very much for your support. It's much appreciated. Yeah, it looks like, guys, that Eddie is going for the patented Swiss cheese defense strategy, but thankfully, with another hole, of course, at the front of his base, there's always a hole. He's going to be building a siege workshop and trying to get at a defensive Manganel to go put a stop to this army, but it's too late. Spartan's already in here, and it's a massacre as he's putting down two TCs at his base anyway. Yeah, uh, come on. Spartan here gonna find a bunch of villagers. If not, he will force a bunch of idle time. Meanwhile, back at home, uh, Spartan here bringing out a couple of cavalry archers, and uh, that's gonna be um, enough to kind of defend for now. But yeah, Spartan lost a whole lot of villagers there, and that advantage, that villager advantage that Spartan had earlier on, completely obliterated. He's down to 47 vills, Eddie's sitting on 48. Oh, but thankfully though, Eddie does have a mangonel, which is the perfect answer to this massed group of crossmen. It's gonna come down to some sick micro. These crossmen though are still being incredibly effective. As long as he can avoid losing them all... Ooh. Oh, losing them all, he says. And that shot coming in, killing a bunch. And uh, Spartan here with a nice hill bonus, giving him a little bit of extra uh, kind of attack damage on those mangoes there. He will take one. Will he take two? Does he have the commitment? Does he have the balls of steel to commit to this? Does he have the ability to micro... It looks like he does, and I mean, he is doing so much damage back here. I think Spartan spent more time on Eddie's wood line than uh, he's even spent in his own base at this point. That was some Ooh. sick crossbow in micro. I mean, sure, he loses them all right now, but for a while, he was looking strong, and he picked off the repairer yeah. first on the mangonel, which was smart. The scorpion a little bit harder to juke the shots of, and... Uh, you know, even though the Crossman army got cleaned up, I would say that was a worthwhile attack as Spaden gonna start transitioning into the patented classic Huns cavalry archers. Gonna put down two ranges for a total of four. He's booming up. He's making an army. What is Eddie's response? 
Eddie's response is probably more defensive manganels and sit behind the walls, try and get to imp and do something like that, I believe. But yeah, Spartan there, great play. Yes, he did lose all the crossbows, but I think they did enough damage. I mean, they took down one manganel, they forced a bunch of villager idle time, they killed two monks. I mean, what didn't they do? They just, they went ham. And uh, now, of course, Spartan keeping the pressure on, sending those cavalry archers to the back once again. He likes that hill. I think he's particularly fond of that hill. Yeah, I mean, Eddie's map looking worse and worse as time goes on as that hill been to be devastating and leaving this hole at the front is also just bad news bears for him as the cavalry archers just constantly streaming in and while Spawn is on the offensive he's just building and building his economy lead back at home. Yeah, my question there is how did Eddie not get a conversion on those cavalry <laughs> archers? I mean Eddie is doing Eddie things which is of course making monks. I mean that's what Eddie does. They're his favorite unit and uh I'm just amazed that he didn't manage to pull a conversion out there, like, it just seemed almost certain he'd get one, but no, he didn't get any, and as a result, Spartan killed a couple of monks, uh, ending up use losing all of those cavalry archers to a manganel shot though, but like you say, I mean, back at home, Spartan here, building up, he is booming, and he should not be getting away with this, he should not be able to boom in this situation, because he's so open. I mean, we say about how Eddie has got these holes in his wall, but there's absolutely nothing stopping Eddie attacking Spartan here with a few, uh, you know, crossbows or something like that. And I think that's what uh, Eddie perhaps should have done. He should have maybe gone into crossbow rather than sort of sitting back at home and defending. But, and, and try and take advantage of the map. But really here, Eddie is a sitting duck right now. Spartan can attack when he wants. I mean, he is, you know, he's just like, he's got a, the key to the door of Eddie's base and he will show up when he likes. He will drink his beers. He will, you know, use everything he has and then he'll leave whenever he damn well pleases. So Spartan with uh, a, lot of, a lot of power at the moment in this game. Eddie's sort of playing as if this map was arena and he is like a... <laughs> It's like a tower defense game going on right now, as he knows that the waves of units are going to come down this predictable open hole at the front of his base. <laughs> Eddie just cramming it with siege weapons, and I'm going to be honest, the scorpions yeah. there were pretty sick. They got to, you know, fire yeah. piercing bolts through that entire army, and what army of cavalry archers? Yeah, they, they are doing a lot of damage. The <laughs> siege is working, and I mean, Spartan here actually throwing away a lot of cavalry archers there, but I love that Eddie Tower defense. I think we need to make a, uh, a custom scenario called Eddie Tower defense. <laughs> and you know, it consists of building a lot of mangonels and just waiting for your enemy to come, but my god, he's actually doing so well defending this with just a few siege units, and I do feel like this is actually a, a very good response for now. Um, it's it's going to be able to deny um, Spartan enough of an advantage that Eddie can't actually catch up. So I think he, he does have the possibility now to get himself back into this game. He has got an eco going off on the left-hand side and he's seeded a lot of farm. So Eddie will be in and he'll be going for elite illegal warriors very shortly, I'm sure. And that could be his ticket out of this game. We'll have to see as it looks like Eddie has killed a grand total of 22 more units than he's lost this game, which isn't as ridiculous as you think, considering how many Spaden was thrown away, but at the same time, when Spaden loses his entire army, he usually takes down a lot of villagers with it, so it kind of evens out, and he already has a huge army with a couple of knights in here, which are going to you know, yeah. turn those scorpions uh, and mangonels into mincemeat. Can Eddie get to the Imperial Age before he crumbles under this army well. of Spaden? Maybe. He has got the monks in here as well, so a little bit of good monk micro, which Eddie should be able to pull off, then he can deal with the knights quite easily. The thing to note here with the cavalry archers is that they are very strong, because they do have enough health to tank a mangonel shot, and with the bloodlines there, they are able to do just that. Now, Eddie, he will get a couple of conversions, but the army here is still able to clean up the mangonels. He's still able to apply that pressure very well, and this is the thing here. A lot of people in the chat are saying Spartan's villager advantage is just too big. You know, 30 extra villagers at this stage, how can Eddie pull back from this? Well, it's really worth pointing out that uh, Eddie's economy is extremely efficient due to the uh, Aztec bonus of uh, extra carry capacity. But, at the same time, with Eddie investing all those resources going Imperial and not in military, 
Spartan here is looking pretty scary as he sits outside of his base with four times the military units. Yeah, even more important, how is he going to deal with these 30 extra military units? And we can really see here how the tower defense, defense strategy, kind of just fails entirely when your opponent's not fighting in a narrow choke point. Those scorpions, not so good in a spread out battle. Same with the mangonels. And, you know, since the cavalry archers have so much mobility, the knights too, they're able to get up to those minimum range siege units, take them out. But, Eddie, in the Imperial Age, is elite eagle warrior enough it's looking shaky no chance <laughs> there's no chance now that eddie is gonna make this work it's just too late he's sure he's imperial sure he's getting elite eagle warrior but he is too slow to get up to imp in this game i feel you know imperial age should be coming in a lot sooner than this and spartan is all over him look at the idols in these tcs look at the villagers just like knocking on the door like please let us in they're gonna kill us uh, but no there's no room at the tc <laughs> and uh, eddie is calling gg whoa well played as uh, spartan will get the win and a very very solid win for spartan considering his map as well i cannot believe that spartan somehow managed to win this game and in a truly spectacular fashion as he did this was ridiculous there were so many holes in this in this game <laughs> Of course, Eddie blaming the holes for his loss. Um, I think you could argue that, yeah, those holes screwed him over. But he should have checked. He should have checked. And it's so easy to tell if you have a hole. All you have to do is send a villager to the outside of your wall. And if they move there, then there's a hole. Um, but, yeah, it's a great game from Spartan there. And I think it was, it was a pretty awesome win, considering his map was just so atrocious. So... Well played by both, and that leaves the scores tied up at one point apiece, as we'll get ready to go into game three in a second. I believe Eddie was asking me a question there. Um... Well, consider me...